Or I'm curious how many tunes Jamie Abersall thinks he knows. I'll bet I know six, seven, or eight hundred tunes. I know tunes that I've never really played because I, my mom and dad were amateur musicians. They played at home. My dad played the banjo and messed around the piano, and my mom played the piano and sang, but she never played out in public, but my dad did. So I heard these tunes all the time. I heard them at lunchtime. I heard them at supper time. My dad would put 78 records on them. I was a very slow eater, so I was always the last one to leave the table. I had two brothers. I got to hear all the records. And little did I know that X amount of years later, I'd be pulling those out of my mind at a dance when somebody said, do you know T for two, you know? Or do you know it's three o'clock in the morning or whatever? So I was, uh, I heard those songs and I didn't know I was gonna need them later. But later when I needed them, by that time I had the ear and the theoretical knowledge to pick them out on the bandstand on the spur of the moment, yeah. which was very helpful. What's the most popular play along at this point? I'd say the most popular one that we saw the most of was probably volume 54. Uh, that's called Maiden Voyage, and it's got Summertime, Autumn Leaves, I think Perdido, Satin Doll, um, tunes like that. And then the other one would be Volume 1, because there's always people getting started. I heard you talk about the bird play-along as being popular. Yeah, it's popular, but that's... Uh, I, I sell some of that, but not nearly as much as I used to. Mm -hmm. Using play-alongs, using my play-alongs and the popularity of them is not what it used to be at all. Not all. I don't know what people are using. Well, as a matter of fact, the other day, last week when I was at this class at U of L, it was a repertoire class, and they're all adults. And I took over a, a nice big copy, which I enlarged, of volume one, the very first couple of tracks, which are eight bars of uh, F minor scale, Dorian, E flat for eight bars, and D minor for eight bars. And then the next track was four bars a piece. And I held it up and I asked him, I said, how many of you know what this is? Nobody knew except one person, and he was older, a guitar player. He said, that's volume one. I said, that's exactly what I thought. None of you have grown up with volume one. And you missed a lot by not doing that, because it's got two files on it, it's got the cycle, and so forth. So that showed me that things are different than they used to be. I've been extremely disappointed in music over the last, what, 30, 40, 50 years. The pop stuff has taken over. Yeah. and uh, the jazz, I think the people that may be at high school and probably at a college level who are running the jazz programs, I think an awful lot of them still don't have a good basic foundation in ear training and theory and the repertoire. That's what I think. Because when I hear people play, who've been playing for a while, students, and they don't have the basics down, it's like they've never seen, for instance, volume one or volume 54. You know, they'll be playing Autumn Lees, but they're playing strange notes and they're not playing what they hear in their head. They're just letting their fingers kind of ramble around. And I'm thinking, boy, this, this girl or this boy needs volume 54. They need to buckle down and learn the scales in the order that they appear, play the arpeggios and so forth. And that'll give courage to your imagination. But what they're playing right now in front of me doesn't make any sense. Mm 